to go. Uh, TFYLP episode 268. Um, I'm your host, uh, Megamus. With me tonight is Headmaster Don. Everybody. And Sergio. Evening. Uh, coming at you from a dark, undisclosed location somewhere beneath the Potomac. Yeah, I'm stashing I, my hoard of toys here. Can't let I anybody still, know I I'm still at. think he's in a bunk bed. I think he's in bunk beds. <clears throat> I'm in my nuclear bunker. Something like that. Made, yeah. of, made of wood. Yeah, wood pedaling, nuclear energy's major enemy. Its one weakness is polished wood. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I am thinking, how do we go about this? Um, well, all right. Well, go ahead. Go ahead, Don. Okay. Well, we got two, ba- two major topics tonight we're going to cover. Uh, one, we're going to be discussing Masterpiece Dinobot. Uh, and we're going to be talking about the pricing of Mr. Matthew Steinbot and what that could mean for the fandom. We're also going to be looking at it's the holiday season. And as always, we like to offer our recommendations on what you can get for the Transformer Collector in your life. Uh, so that way, we're, we're all going to be offering our own, uh, ind- our own individual opinions of what we thought had come out recently or come out this year. Uh, or maybe even something from the previous year that's uh, either reissued or slipped under everybody's radar. So that's what we're going to cover tonight. But first up, uh, we will talk about our sponsors. Uh, Captured Prey, great toys, great prices, great service, CapturedPrey.com. Be sure to check out Captured Prey for all the latest uh, pre-orders for both Takara, Hasbro, and third-party figures. Also check out their uh, sale prices. on. Uh, uh, they, they've got some sales running now. Uh, so check out your holiday specials with them. Also, be sure to check out Mega Toy Fan. Uh, Mega Toy Fan is at most major Transformer and Robot and Toy conventions. Uh, also, be sure to check with them. Check with them on Facebook uh, f- uh, for all your vintage toys needs as well. Maximize your collection, minimize your costs with Mega Toy Fan. So, um, Brett, you want to get us started on either the recommendations or Dinobot. <laughs> Well, I, th- I thought we'd start with, um, well, does anyone have the, the, the new pictures of Dinobot? I was just flipping through here and looking at it, um, trying to find it. Uh, but but let's, let's, let's talk about that first. So one of the things that, um, that we've noticed is the increase in pricing in Masterpiece uh, toys. Um, I mean, I, I know you guys have seen it with, with Megatron. And, um, and and now, uh, Dinobot. What is it like? Uh, two two fifty, two sixty. Uh, I've seen him as low as Amazon Japan before shipping, one ninety seven to one ninety nine to two oh seven. Again, depending how the yen's fluctuating. But this is for a figure about six months down the road, give or take. So right. the yen is still going to fluctuate. But that's the cheapest I've seen it. Shipping would run you about again ballpark of around 20 so 220 to 230 most places in the u.s are doing pre-orders around 249 i don't know where i was getting that i I could have sworn they said it was about 250 260 but still um do you 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 guys remember when the cars came out yes uh you know uh sideswipe um what was the price point on that 80 79 I was going to say right around 80 bucks, right? Yeah, 80 mm-hmm. bucks because I remember at the time with the yen rate with what it was, I was able – most places were 79 in the U.S. before shipping. With Hobby Link Japan, before the EMS shipping went up in Japan uh, across the board, I was able to get most of the Masterpiece cars for about 63 to 69 shipped. From Hobby Link, it was it was around ten dollars less than everywhere else in the U.S. Plus, I got them a little bit faster than waiting for the U.S. people to get them in stock. Okay, so then, um, and there's a couple other things I kind of want to hit on, um, but <clears throat> let's jump ahead. And um, I'm writing myself a note. Be uh, as awesome as Don. Okay. Uh, actually, I was right in Massey Attack, but okay. Um, so, so we jump yes, a few years ahead. I have a laser pointer for a- my anti-muscle. Uh, I anti- was gonna say, is that a taser? You're yes. a tasing. 
That <laughs> is it is an anti massy laser pointer defense system. All I can say is this much. Oh my god, Sergio, am I the only one that sees half a face? No, he looks normal. There you go. I, I'm sitting there talking to you. I got, I got like it's like two face going on. It's anyway. like full face on mine, but it <laughs> might have been the angle. <laughs> um okay. How about um Cheetor? What was I, the price point on that? He, I got he, mine super cheap. I'm yeah. trying to remember. It was like from Amazon Japan. I got like, f- I'm going to say 50 plus shipping. Yeah. And then you had Primal, which, which was, was about 120? 100, 110. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So if we're just going to look at, let's just say, we'll start this off and say, just look at the Beast Wars characters. And, and you're, you're looking at price points of 110. You know, 60, 70 bucks, and then all of a sudden this jumps up to, to $200. Mm-hmm. That's that's a definite increase. Um, do you see more play value, more accessories and such on Dinobot that would warrant the big hike in price as opposed to Primal? Which we'll, we'll go uh, with, uh, <clears throat> we'll go with Sergio at first. It's, he's been quiet. Uh, well, from what I've seen, at least he comes with a lot of stuff. <clears throat> What's weird is that he's coming with a base. I think all future releases are going to come with that base now. Because I, I just think it's odd that of all the characters that they could include a base with, he's getting one. Well, if you remember, they did that with a lot of the Seekers, and then they backed off from it. Yeah, they did that, and then Trax had one, and then nobody yeah. after that had one. Not even... Well, I mean... Yeah, Megatron couldn't even make that that stand that he... I think he... No, I think he could make a stand. But it's like makeshift, kind of, with a silencer... Right. Um, he is much larger. I know that, but <clears throat> honestly, until we see in hand video, I don't think I can fairly judge as far as pounds, uh, parts count, and paint, and all of that. We also don't know if it comes with any die cast or anything like that. You know, as far we've we've only seen gray models. I don't think we've we've only seen promotional colored photos. We haven't seen any in hand. Even at the the toy show they have this weekend. They only have the gray model on display, right? But you get a you get an idea of how much you know real estate Mass. you're getting. Yeah, and uh, while it is a lot, but you're talking almost twice as much. Yeah, I think it's I'm pretty I'm, I'm pretty biased on this topic because they're gonna name re, re, remain nameless. But I know I get my expensive toys from someone who sells me f- sells them to me for uh, wholesale, so I get the wholesale cost. So I'm only paying like one seventy for mine. After shipping, so I'm not. I don't think I'm really the person to ask. <laughs> no, but still, look at that. I mean, and let's just say you could have got Primal at cost, which probably would have been closer to eighty. Okay. Well, there you go. You're still paying, you know, twice as much uh, for a toy that's a little bit bigger. I mean, yeah, it comes with a, a, a couple things. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think I, <laughs> first of all, let me go go on record as saying by the just by the pictures, it is freaking awesome. It is. It's. It's amazing. It looks. It looks beautiful. But I'm. I'm really stuck on the big price difference from what we've seen. You know. Yeah. I mean, it's I, really got me thrown for a loop on that. I have my own kind of rant that I'm going to save for later on what I've gathered from speaking to different people on uh, the cost of toy making and all of that. And it, I mean, it, it's still to to an extent. I I still think it is. It's expensive. There's no dancing around it, but. I can see why it's expensive. It, it still doesn't mean that I'm happy that it's that much or that, you know, oh, I'm, oh, I'm okay with them price gouging. There, I think there's price gouging to an extent. But I don't think I don't think he was cheap to create. Okay. So you think that um, at least part of the price height is warranted? Yeah. I wouldn't say the full price, but definitely part of it. Okay. Don? Yeah, actually, Sergio's saying a lot of the same things I've been thinking since we found out about this figure. Um, I think what we're looking at is, is, a, is, no pun intended, it's a prime situation of what we've talked about in the past about how is Takara looking at these masterpieces in the order of creation? How many repaints can they get out of them for more mold use? How many markets can they look at to sell this figure in in its various formats in order to make it a, a cheaper down the road 
or to recover their costs. And I think, like, for example, Mirage. Okay? Whenever we get a Mirage, Mirage is not going to have a lot of repaint potential. You could do the unreleased G2 colors that's been seen in several books. You could do a phasing version like they've done for several third-party figures. Um, maybe a shattered glass color, maybe a diaclone color. So there are some options. But some of them are way out there. But there's not as much potential as some other car figures. But Dinobot is that to an even greater extreme. So unless you do a shattered glass Grimlock, in these in the with the raptor mold or you do grimlock in the dalmatian color motif unless you mm -hmm. make a new character like like slash slash that just came out of power of the primes could you do that for her with a new head maybe i, I don't know but i think what you're looking at here is a major example of there just ain't a lot of repay potential and they're going to have to recoup as much as possible up front. So well, yeah, I think there's some well, I think there's some engineering costs built into this. But the one thing that this hurts more is this is coming right after Sunstreaker, who was a hundred and twenty to hundred and thirty dollars as a jump up from when we got Ironhide and Ratchet for around eighty nine to ninety nine dollars. Yep. Who came with a whole bunch of stuff. Yep. And now, you, now you've got Sunstreaker jumping up to this one twenty, one thirty price, where he does come with a quite a bit of stuff. I don't, I don't think he can, it's as much stuff as what they came with Ironhide and Ratchet. But again, we don't know what this Lamborghini license is going to cost them to actually get. But to get Sunstreaker at that price, and then get this Dinobot, that's a one-two whammy. That's left me kind of worried about. Where masterpiece is going on down the road? Well, you're you're forgetting one too. Megatron. Megatron was a hike too. No, that's true. Uh, well, I, I don't have Megatron. I'm looking at getting uh, the Yzhang version for myself because uh, Yzhang has proven themselves to me over the over the past year or two for their quality. It, it's uh, uh, but I just don't have that Megatron. But you are right. I, I didn't think about him. So <clears throat> here's something to think about. All right. Um, we've always talked about this before when we talked about um, uh, when they think about characters to produce, you know, how many times can we reuse this mold? Can we do repaints and blah, blah, blah. But think about it. Um, Cheetor, they did not. They don't. They have yet to do a remold of. But they do have a basic skeleton in place for Tigatron. They, they do. And it would be great. But I'm just saying right now yes. they don't. Uh, Primal. The, the anime, I, I guess you could call that a repaint, um, but there's so many more they could do that they haven't touched. Megatron, they haven't done, which I don't know what all they could do with that, but um, think about it. When was the last repaint that they did? Do you, are you counting Ratchet and Ironhide as repaints of each other, or now, Art I, Fire? I, I, Art Fire I, think, came it, I think Art Fire would be the last one. Okay. Okay. Yeah, he was in May. Okay. So they're still doing them, but it just seems to me if it was that important, they would sprinkle them in more often. So I don't know if it's as important to them anymore to do these <clears throat> reasons. Well, it depends well, on the sales. Yeah. You know, if they sell a ton of one, then they're not going to need to make well, and, a repaint. And, and that goes right back to the, the point I was going to make is, is you're talking about a new market of Beast Wars in the masterpiece area and I they're right now they're looking at their sales or, or holding their own without the repaints. See, and so sure. well and so because these sales are so high, what are they going to do? They increase them. They mark up the value. And they've marked it up about twenty five percent. If you look at the prices of uh, Sunstreaker from uh, the the Ironhide Ratchet in them, you're you're looking at a twenty five percent increase. And guess what? We're going to pay it. And they see that with Beast Wars right off the bat. So I think that has a lot to do with why they hiked the price up. Plus, there's just not. Plus, there's there's absolute a metric crap ton of G1 stuff out there. Obviously, we've, we've talked about this before. How much you know? It, but there's almost nothing out there for the Beast Wars. The anniversary went by. 
Hasbro didn't do any didn't do anything for it. Takara has been the only one doing anything as far as homages. And this is the I mean this this is the big one of the big things. I mean, there's not many characters other than other than Megatron. The Megatron that, one, I think, when that gets announced, it's just going to blow people away. Well, now one thing I'm going to am going to bring up because we did discuss this on RFC X and XV brought this up uh, that. Megatron may not actually wind up costing more than Dinobot, even though he's a bigger figure, because it's the level of engineering, because the animation model for Megatron on, in, in the show was very similar to the toy. So there's not a lot of magic powder necessary to get yeah, it, Megatron looking well, like his, you know, correct, like the animation. Because, yeah. Right, because his, his robot mode had a lot of his beast characteristics in it whereas right. Dinobot didn't he looked more humanoid because yeah. of the folding panels and whatnot the the magic powder basically uh, right. you're ha you're having you're having to engineer Dinobot more to get the way he's supposed to look versus Megatron who'd be a lot simpler so you know I'm just giving credit to Rob and uh, XV for you know when they were discussing that on RFC but I think Primal was simple just, too he, he was, but they added more to it. Plus, there you was know. also the, that 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 paint process that they used. The the I can't remember the technical name where where they dip where they dip it in the paint and to get the natural variations in texture. Right. It's just with Dinobot. It's like we know you want these characters. You ain't got a lot of choice when it comes to Beast Wars, so we're going to charge you more for it. Plus, the fact is, we can't reuse this as much, so we got to get back what we can. Well, that was my point. That was my point. If, if they're already paying for it, we're going to hit them up front at the door, as opposed to uh, we're going to hit them, you know, sporadically with repaints. So well, see, I, I've I, always that has a lot to do with it. I've always thought they use the repaints to give them not just another mold use, but breathing time in between your major releases right it's like i would have i would think road rage would have done better if she had come out a little further beyond what she did but she came out way too close to tracks so you know again that's just my opinion is that she may but now she's sitting every, everywhere on the market i've seen this loves 50 bucks for road mm -hmm. rage so but i still think they're looking at using these repaints when they need a breather room when, it's like it's like for the secret mold. It seems like the secret mold came out just infrequent enough to give them some breather room between your more major releases. That's, that's, that's what it seems to me anyway. And, and they might be they might be used that way also. I mean, my understanding is is that they've got you know, and, and there's others that could probably would definitely would know more than me about it. But I thought they had designs for quite a number that are sitting on the back burner just waiting to be done you know even dinobot um i thought they had a design for that a while ago and they, they just now released it they had to redo him i remember they showed him like well over a year ago and mm -hmm. it looked terrible <laughs> i yeah. remember that the, the render they showed it was awful but i i i i still think well i yeah I, I think it does have a lot more to do with breather room than than the money. I think they get their money up front. I really do, and I think that they they, they think that there's more G1 collectors out there than there are Beast Wars collectors. So, you know, I could say that that's why they're doing the price hike, but they're doing it across the board. Yeah, you know, the Sunstreaker's up in value uh, or in price. The uh, Megatron's up in price. Um, but here's another thing I want to throw a little uh, wrench in the works is. Does anyone else remember the little snafu with Soundwave? Where yeah, wasn't it, wasn't he like super ridiculously expensive when it first yeah, came it was out? Very for expensive, no yeah. reason. And then all of a sudden, you know, you you bought Soundwave and you paid. I don't remember. It was like two hundred dollars. Like, yeah, it was like two hundred. And then you and then you didn't get. You got one cassette, and then to get the two cassettes, that was another sixty five dollars. And then get the other two cassettes, that was sixty five dollars. And then all of a sudden, one Christmas. Toys R Us gets it all together for like 150, 160 bucks. Yeah, and, and everyone was like, "Holy crap!" And and see, we never really found out. 
with any exact certainty how they achieved that. I mean, how did Hasbro market that set that cheap when there was no drop in quality, there was no massive paint, when the, well, depainting is what I call it. To, to your eyes. The, yeah, it's just, it's just boom. It's just, yeah. so. You, you, had, you had a little bit of paint, this? you had packaging. <clears throat> you took a, off the top of my head, a 400 something dollar value and you knocked it down to 160, 70 bucks. I mean, do you think we'll see that with Dinobot as a release in the U.S.? I don't know. The I, others. I wanted to throw that out there because it's not out of the realm of possibility. But, a, I, don't, but I don't think Masterpiece does well in the U.S. Because by the time they release it in the U.S., most collectors already have the Japanese version. And yeah, every release so that. far every release so far has been shelf How many of you went out and jumped all right away at MP10, the Takara version? Or did you wait for the one from Toys R Us that was a ton te- cheaper? I did. I really had no choice. Was I, learned? I just got lucky. <laughs> I, I'm just saying. I mean, people learn. So well, it, well, here's something. Sorry, Brett. Here's oh, something. Sorry. Here's something on, on that same thought. With MP Dinobots price, do you think we're going to be looking at more people holding off, waiting? For a to, for a Hasbro domestic release, I, I mean, gamble. you know, you know, I, I it, think, well, it's always a gamble, but I think now more than ever, you're <laughs> going to be seeing more people hoping for a to call, for a Hasbro domestic release for this at a lower price. I, I'm going to go out on a limb, and it's not really that long of a limb, uh, and say that I don't think that the line for people that are going to line up to buy MP. You know, uh, Dinobot is going to be like the people lining up for the new iPhone. It's not going to be like that. You know, I got to have it on launch day. I don't think you're going to see that. I think those days are actually over. And I think you see that, as a matter of fact, I think you see that across the board with even third party. My prediction is going to be, it's going to be like Megatron, where the uh, leading up to the release, everybody's trashing it. Everybody's trashing how the price gets it. Everybody gets it. Uh, those who pre-ordered it get it start posting all over the groups how amazing it is then when it's too late it's sold out everywhere i think that's what's going to happen it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's i've exactly. seen it happen before i, I know how the fandom is we're going to complain about it but at the end I, of the day it's going to sell out saying, but I, I i don't i don't know that's yeah, just my I, prediction because I, I i saw the same thing with megatron the same thing where oh i'm gonna takara is losing their mind or i'm gonna Buy this third party one, and that's what everybody said. Yeah, but the big it, problem is, is that I, I haven't heard one person that looked at Dinobot and went, "Oh, that's ugly," or Ugh, "They could do that better." It looks amazing. Other, other than the dinosaur mode mode being pretty panelly to get yeah. what they had to happen, that's the that's the only downside I've heard. But everyone has always said, "Hey, that Dino mode looks a little panelly." But we understand why it is to get that robot mode. Sure, but and I look think, the robot mode. Oh my yeah, god! Yeah, I, but I think right now we we can no longer say and use past experiences with Takara for future predictions because when you have a company that out of the blue is doing Street Fighter Transformers <laughs> out, out, out of nowhere. You did say repaints, didn't you? Yes, but but also, <laughs> uh, I mean, would you have expected that in the, any realm of possibility? I, I never thought we'd get a convention with Transformers and My Little Ponies, but guess what? It happened. It happened. <laughs> okay, all right, right here. I never thought I would get her, and I did. So we can no longer say, well, in the past they did this, so this is what's going to probably happen. It is all out the window, tumbling downhill, off the cliff, into the ocean, and sinking to the bottom. We don't know what's going to happen anymore. Past predictions, past events, you can give a vague idea of what may happen, but there are no more assure bets when you do. Well, when, when, I, I, when I get Headmaster RC and you get Street Fighter Transformers, <laughs> check, I, please. I, I see what you're saying. I do. But I, I also am going to go back and say that you never really had an assurity anyway. It, it was always you, – you always had 
you, you had you know, people that didn't have their finger on the pulse of the collectors making decisions. Then all of a sudden they went into this masterpiece realm and found out, hey, if we put people in charge of this division that actually know what the collectors want, we'll sell more. And so that worked for a while. But evidently it didn't work well enough, so then they had to start puking out all the repaints. And because some of them were just, you know, let's face it, they, they were not that good, you know. So, but then I jump back to what happened with the Toys R Us, and you're right. No one knows how that happened with the sound wave. It's but just... it did. And so is it a possibility? Sure it is. So I, I <sighs> all right. So the point being is, is that the price of these things are getting jacked up, right? They're going up. Um, the collector value is as it always was. Anyone that thinks just because they're paying $200 for a toy that's going to be worth way more in the future as opposed to a $10 toy, you know, you're delusional. That's not how it works. Yeah. Uh, and right. everyone also knows that when you stick the word collector on a box – You've just decreased the value. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look how much look how much early '90s toy biz stuff came with like the little collect the like collectors. Remember, they numbered them? remember like huh? like playmates when playmates numbered like all the Star Trek stuff, and they numbered yeah. them all. And people went ape, you know, they went crap over this. Uh, yeah, they're not worth anything. When you when you assign a collector name or rarity. To an item, you've already decreased the value. That's how I look at other, it. It's other the ones than that some of the, don't know about. That's what yeah. happens. Other than other than a couple of the seventeen oh one figures, the whole Playmates line is pretty affordable across the board. Sure, sure. But those seventeen oh ones aren't nearly worth what they were when people thought they were going to be oh, worth no. billions. No. So, but um, so the topic was, what do you think the fandom's going to do? Do you think the fandom's still going to collect these higher end collectibles? If you look at like um, collectors of Hot Toys, you know where two, three hundred dollars for a figure is that's normal. They, you know, Hot Toys they don't have ten, fifteen dollar toys. Yeah, you know, all yeah. theirs are you know, one hundred fifty plus. You know, I basically Dinobot is our hot, our, our best, our best example of the Hot Toys pricing structure. Sure. Because I mean, you know that that is in the same area as your 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 basic Hot Toys figures. Exactly. Uh, I'll be I'll be honest. I I want Dinobot for the collection because he does look good. But I'm thinking I'm sitting here. Will I be able to actually enjoy that toy sitting on the shelf, knowing that I paid two hundred to two? I mean, I mean, I've spent that for some third party things. <laughs> But that uh, those were some pretty big, massive pieces. I feel like that's a whole other beast right there because you can look at your entire uh, collection and be like, you know, am I really it? enjoying what could be, in some cases, another house? <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's just uh, I, I want it, and I I know I would like the figure. It's just what I'm spending for what I'm getting. I don't know if I'm going to be able to enjoy that figure from what I have to pay for it. Okay, Which, so. Then, then my question to you is going to be, do you think there's more people in the collector fandom that think like you do? Or that there's more that are going to just say, I want it, I'm going to pay it? Well, I don't think it work. I you, think, you need your bowl of coffee. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm out, I have to go get some. Uh, <laughs> I think there there's enough people that are Beast Wars fans that started out as Beast Beast Wars is their G one, right? This is the G one for people. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, they, and they're a, they're of an age now where they have the discretionary income because they're going to be in their early to mid twenties, late twenties, maybe even early thirties, give or take. They've got a discretionary income. This is the character as if it stepped off the TV screen. This is their Optimus Prime. This is their G1 Megatron. This is the this is the character they're going to buy it no matter what. And I think there's more people out there that that Beast Wars carries that G1 weight for. 
but there's people that was there for G1 like me, like Duran, like you know, like some of the other collectors, like you, Brent, that we were there for G1. We love Beast Wars, but and as much as but as much as we love Dinobot, he's important, but he's not a linchpin figure. If if that makes any sense. Uh, he, well, he, hmm. he, he is he is for Beast Wars in, in the continuity, but it's just I, I don't know. I may not be explaining it the best way. It's 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 really hard to pin this He's, one down. He is not he is not the main. It's put in simplest terms. He's not the main good guy, and he's not the main bad guy. But he made but, the most impact. But he is the most. Neutral flip back before, you know, but, but he he's the most I'm going to say he's one of the most pivotal characters. That's, that's a good season. word. How's that go? That that's a great word for Dinobot pivotal because yeah. everything revolves around his even after yes. he's dead. His actions continue to drive. Oh, sorry. Spoilers. Um, <laughs> his <laughs> actions continue to drive the show. 20 up years until the old at this point. <laughs> So yeah, that's a great that's a great choice of words, Brett. And by the way, I was going to say that too. Um, yeah. This is another thing that I think is going to drive the price um, to where you know there's going to be a lot of people that are going to buy it. Is um, if you look at toys um, when they come into their and to coin your phrase their prime for collectability is usually around ten to fifteen years. Um, and that's usually because if you're a kid and you play with these toys, you get older, you get settled into your job. Hey, I want to go, you know, nostalgic. It's usually about 15 years. Um, we're actually at 22 years since Beast Wars first came out. Came out in 95. So if we're well past that. So I think the people that have the money that grew up with that, that have already established themselves – are more than ready to buy this. So they're willing to pay the extra money. So I think that kind of lends to it a little bit too, because they've had to wait. You know, you got Primal. Um, Cheetor was, uh, let's face it, you know, here's how I look at it. Primal is up here, all right? Cheetor is like, you know, he's okay. And Dinobot's definitely up there with Primal, if not better. So... They've waited long enough. I think they're they're ready. You know, they're ready to spend the money. And if you look at it, I think Cheetor's engineering work was a test run for Dinobot to see to to try because on Cheetor, a smaller scale on a, on a smaller scale to see how far they could push because you know Cheetor does basically just stand up and become a robot. Kind of, he doesn't do the the the, the magic folding and the un unfolding that Dinobot does. Right. But I but I do believe that Cheetor's engineering work was a dry run for Dinobot, and like I said, we did get from from Cheetor at least a basic transforming skeleton for Tigatron. If not the same mold, obviously, but at least the same basic transformation. You know, I, I look at that and I think all they'd have to do is beef it up a little bit. Because in my opinion, even though you know everyone knows the original toys were off the same mold. I always thought that Tigatron uh, was a little beefier than, yeah. than Chief. You know, uh, a snow snow leopard. So he was he was thicker, uh, and I don't think it would take that much. And, and they honestly, you know, you know, uh, quit teasing your cat. Um, I, I think all they would really have to do, if you're right, is just make a simple uh, paint repaint, and they could get away with it with the exact same. Everything, and they could get away with it. But I would hope they give us a little more. Yeah, as a Tigertron fan, I, I really would not want a straight repaint of Cheetor. I would neither. I, I think a, a, like a bigger mane or something, you know, just a, a beefier. Uh, but I, I might be asking too much, you know. Yeah. I think we'd be lucky but, if we get a, a head sculpt. Yeah, but I, I think I think I think Dinobot is going to literally be. We're going to have to wait and see what happens because. It could go in so many different directions as soon as it hits the market. And it's just, 
All I hope is the car gets better on their photography. Because if we look at Ironhide <laughs> and Ratchet, how how badly they've screwed up a lot of their promotional photography to get us interested. When everything is said and done, and the fi- and the, the product says, "Here is a product shot of your two hundred and fifty dollar Dinobot." It needs to be right. Then I think everybody, again, once it once it starts hitting video, that'll be the the big push there. But these promotional photos have got to be right, otherwise they could cost themselves some sales based off of that. Well, let me ask you this much: What do you think of the promotional shots they did of uh, Sunstreaker? Do you think that those were a one? I do, but here I'll be honest. Here's the thing: I have Sun Surge. I think he looks great as, as Sunstreaker, and I really didn't look at Sunstreaker that much because it wasn't worth me spending. It. Like you, like we talked about on one show, Brad. I don't think Sergio was here. Yep. The value to replace Sun Surge with Sunstreaker in my masterpiece shelf is not there if I'm spending one hundred and thirty dollars to get something that's not that much better than what I have. Sorry, so I really did, I, there you go. But I, I see really your video did, now. Yeah. Sorry, good. But, but I really, but I really did not look at Sunstreaker that much, other than oh, that's nice, it's interesting. But I already have a good one on the shelf. I can save that one hundred and twenty dollars. Now, see, I look at. I'm, I'm just flipping through some of the promotional that they show him, and I mean, he's got some good. They show him in the you know, the nice, you know, uh, uh, Charlie's Angels gun mode. You know, shooting the gun and. I, I, it, it looks I'm, fine. Yeah. It looks okay. And I like the one where they have him unfolded, like like you see him peeling apart for the transformation. I mean that that right there is shows you the kind of engineering that they've got going on this character. Yeah. But but here, can I screen share? Let me see here. This was one that I saw, and I, I just I just think it's funny because you talk about. Um, you know, they're, they're trying to show the best aspects of this toy. And, uh, well, this is Hobby Web Denjiki. Denjiki? Den- so I, don't, I don't know if it's the... Yeah, I, I know you're talking... Denga? Den- yeah, but, but here he is. <laughs> they show a picture of him lying on the ground, and that's cool. Nice little sniper shot. But the only thing I can see is, is look at all that crap on his back. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, you know. I don't, I don't find this very flattering. So I, I agree with you. I think, uh, I think promotional shots is important, but I also think that the one thing that this Dinobot has that Sun Str- uh, doesn't is it's the first third party items haven't tackled this one yet, and I think they know that, and I think that's why they're they're putting a lot of chips into this. What do you think, Sergio? Uh, <clears throat> you talking about the photos, like the photography? Well, just the, the fact that they're, you know, they they know we're, we're the only ones that have Dinobot. You know, with, with Sunstreaker, there's been two other companies that have done it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, it, you're talking about tested waters as opposed to untested waters. Well, I think third party is definitely evolving again. You know, we're we're seeing all the the movie stuff that's been coming out. I think that was long overdue for them to finally break away from the G1. Because when they were doing the G1, it was like five different companies making the same one. And now we're starting to see them do different characters. Uh, they're starting to leave G1. You know, I, I recently got uh, the Make Toys uh, Galaxy Meteor, which is the yeah. Cybertron Starscream. Starscream. And that toy's fantastic. You know, and it's it's uh, the f- one of the best non G one third party toys I've seen in a long time. So, the f- I think that they I think they snoozed big time on on B source. They probably could have cashed in on it before Takara did. Well, look at um, what's that company? One of the companies is doing uh, uh, Transmetal Two Megatron. Perfect effect. They they also did yeah. that really nice. Uh, they did the uh, Primal Optimal Prime. Optimus. Yeah, yeah Optimal Optimus and Primal Prime, which I've got the Optimal Optimus, and it's fantastic. So well, you know, they, they you started know, dipping their toes into it, and I just think that they missed an opportunity because they could be cashing in on this. But they're they're doing it well. They're doing the characters that are a little bit more 
out Obscure. there. Like yeah. you know, you look you look at like that's why I didn't buy Sunstreaker, and that's why I'm holding out on Trailbreaker and all that because I know we're we're probably going to get those eventually s- sooner. Well, than he later. went on record. He went on record as saying that they are going to do what? Did, what was it? The eighty four. Did he say 84, 85 cast, or just eighty four? I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe he said eighty four and eighty five, basically to cover all the Autobot cars. Right, they're going to do them all. So, you know, I've got, I have the X Trans box, Payan, P A Payan, their their hoist, which yeah. I think is the best looking hoist of the third party ones. But I am waiting for an actual car trailbreaker. Because Trailbreaker is important enough to me, I want it as good. Because I've always liked Trailbreaker, and I, none I, of the third parties were quite right. What's the other company that made it? Is it X Transbot that did Trailbreaker? Uh, X Transbots, uh, Bad Q, Bad Q. And... Awesome. Well, that's that's the one that I got of Trailbreaker, and I. I, 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 I'm a really big fan of Trailbreaker, and, and yes, um, I probably will get the official, but I thought it looked really good, just on a side note. So, you know, and Don, we've talked about this before. I mean, we flip back and forth. If the official's good, we go with it. If it if the third party will work, we go with the third party. See, I don't mind mixing third party and official right. in my past. In my, see, I know, I know some people that they want just ma- – just – Masterpiece Hasbro and Takara on their shelf for that that stuff. Me, I I go with the best looking representation that we have currently. You know, it's like I said, you know, this is this is I've got Sun Surge. Yep. I think he looks great. He does have a backpack, but I don't think it's near but as so bad. Is the official. The official yeah. does too. But I mean, I don't I don't think his is quite as bad. But again, yeah. that the official could be mistransformed for all we right. know. Correct. But but the, you know I was a big big fan of if they made an official I wasn't gonna get a third party and I did that all the way up and and Donald laugh at this when I started they started on their seekers and I made it to one specific seeker which I almost threw across the wall so they the quality just went so far downhill that well, I just lost all faith in them. Oh this. I'm glad you brought that up because I was going to. When we get to our second topic, I, this was something I was going to suggest, but I've already suggested it so often. This is not masterpiece Ramjet. This is well, the it's BB7 not shaking around either. Yeah, yeah. This is the BB7 Yes model. Yes, That's- I have the official, and I can't do that. Yeah. He makes a nice hula dancer. You yeah. know, he can and- do the hula dance. And Donanomics aside, this was eighty nine dollars shipped. Yeah, you ain't gonna beat that. And, and it is a solid figure. It looks like Masterpiece Ramjet. Uh, I, again, it's just I'm going where the quality is, not just how cheap. Uh, but this, this is you know, this is a this is a this to me is Masterpiece Ramjet, and I'm happy with them. And like you said, you know, yeah, the quality look- that I got from all three cone heads went from from bad to worse to insufferable. Yeah, they just got worse, worse, and worse. And for a hundred and seventy bucks, and I got this for about half the price. Yeah, and it's that solid. But again, mm-hmm. some people don't like mixing third party and official. On the same shelf, which is fine, you know. Yeah, it's fine. Everybody, it's, everybody, it's, everybody does that, yeah. right? Yeah, right. But I, I bought. I for me, it's being older and having grown up with stuff that you had your knockoffs, you had your little KOs on your counter with your other toys, and it, it ne- never really bothered me as long as as long as the figure was nice. And I guess, I guess it's also it's a, a sort of parallel to growing up with fourth generation VHS tapes. Whereas, you know, I can watch something on a lower quality and be happy because at least I know what's going on. And, <laughs> but, you know, I know a couple of guys that, uh, at the show 
someone was showing off an episode of Robots in Disguise or something on their laptop, but it was like it was like at a two forty DPI. It was a new episode, and one of the guys said, "I'll just wait till I can find it in HD." <laughs> if you if you ha- if you haven't seen it and it's watchable, at least that way you know what's going on, so you're caught up, and then you can always watch it later again if you wanted to. Again, that it's just a tangent, but it's the same the same similar thing. Anyway, I got you. All right, so. Um... Uh, I didn't know if I wanted to jump to that next topic yet. Um, well, okay, final thoughts on Dinobot? Okay, yes. Um, for me, uh, I'll, I'll buy it. I, I, I'll pay it. I'll pay the, the, the price uh, because I think it's a, an exceptionally good-looking figure. Um, but um, I am the guy that um, I will take my chances on it selling out. Because I have been burned too many times, and I wait for a review. I'm going to wait for a review. Because there's too many times that I bought something just afraid that it's going to sell out. And then it's been a horrible figure. So I'm going to wait for the review. That's just me. Uh, but am I going to buy it? More than likely. Unless unless every you know reviewer says this thing is just a total piece of crap. It might look good, but it's, it's horrible. Tolerance is whatever. Yes, I'm buying it. Sergio? I'm buying it. I like Beast Wars enough. I think it looks great. Um, the engineering on Megatron impressed me. The Just the photos of Sunstreaker has impressed me. So I don't think I'll be disappointed. Well, there you go. So you got three yeses across the board. Not too bad. Um, all right, so... The other thing that um, we're going to go right into the uh, Christmas ideas. Is that what you want to do next? Mm-hmm. What do you think, Don? Yeah, yeah well, yeah, because, um, you know, we, we try to help out with, you know, if, if you have a Transformer collector in your life or maybe you're just looking for the next purchase yourself, stuff that you haven't thought of, stuff maybe that slipped under your radar, stuff you want to hear what other people think before you make the decision, like Brett with Dinobot. Right. Um, you know, so we try to help out with some ideas, some stuff that we have actually bought and purchased that we would recommend for you to take a look at for a Christmas gift uh, or whatever the case may be. I gotta we're make doing sure. It, Go ahead. We're doing it kind of early this year because, you know, with as busy as the holiday season gets, you want to get have enough time to get out there, search around for the best price, check, mm-hmm. you know. You know, go to go to Capture Prey, check their price. You know, see what they've got. Uh, if it's a vintage thing, you know, check with check with Brett, uh, make a toy fan. If it's something vintage you're looking for, you know, yeah. But I'm also get... looking at like right now. There's a lot of sales going on. Oh yeah, there. Everybody's got well. Everybody's got sales. Literally, just, right, right. I mean, you could spend a week straight on the computer going to every toy store online across the board, and everyone's got sales. Oh, no, did, did all you get hit on your email with uh, Black Friday? I mean, how many emails did you get that said Black Friday this, Black Friday that? I mean, trust well, me, there's the plenty last, of sales. Yeah, I, I, the, in the last week and a half, my, my folder storage has gone down from like 40% left to like 20% left. I've got to go in and start deleting some stuff out of my, out of my folders. <laughs> yeah, your spam's kicking up. Yeah. So what? Um, let's start with uh, Sergio. Are you ready? What would be? Yep. Let's go with. Um, let's go with official first. Do official. What would be your pick for official for Christmas? Official well, release. Good timing because the reissue of Megatron just dropped, and that is my toy of the year. And it's also my favorite masterpiece that they've ever released. The toy, it, it, it honestly impressed me. The amount of parts that went to it and the, the articulation, the paint, it, it does scratch, but it looks nice. The amount of accessories that it came with, uh, the die cast in it, it's, it's a quality made figure. 
it, the transformation is amazing. It's it, you have to try it for yourself. Like it's one of those things where, you know, once you do it yourself, it's it, it's it's plastic origami. It's amazing. So I would definitely say MP36 Megatron, especially now that the the reissue has come out. I, now is the time to get it before it sells out again. Okay, so your yours would be MP Megatron. Mm-hmm. Don. Uh, okay, I am going to say a couple of things because I'll be honest. There wasn't since I don't have Megatron. I, I really can't attest to the quality. Uh, I've heard of the same thing from a lot of right. people, so I, I've heard a lot of that. But I first don't have him. There hasn't been really one great standout figure this year for, for official for me. There's been a but there's been a lot of figures that were just good figures. So I want to go over a couple of them uh, now. If you want something simple, I think the last three waves of Titans Return, the Deluxes, Twin Twi- uh, I'm sorry, Top Spin, Misfire, Slug Slinger, Trigger Happy, I think those are some of the best molds they've come out with and some of the best figures. Uh, if you like G1, if you some of them are Wreckers characters, if you like Target Masters, I think those those four deluxes there are some of the best deluxes we've ever seen, probably in several years. Probably since which we were, when we were getting reveal the shield and all that kind of stuff. Just some solid figures. The, the, the Titans, the Titans Return gimmick works fine. Um, I've got them behind me here. You know, it's like love Twin Twist, the Top Spin. I keep saying Top. I love Top Spin. Love Slug Slinger. I think Trigger Happy is still one of my favorites of all time, just for the innovation of the transformation. So on, on that, on the the if you got a G one collector, even if they don't collect Titans Returns, I think those are some really great figures. And for the first time ever, I'm going to recommend a movie figure. I know, I know, it, it's weird, it's weird. I know. I am going to recommend Voyager Megatron, the Jet Mode is incredibly detailed the robot mode other than having some of the hole, the holes in the forearms but i think this is probably one of the best figures i have ever seen hasbro and takara do and the quality and is great it, the quality is great and again i hate to say this this is a movie figure if you had told me a couple years ago that I would be giving a movie figure a, a must-buy <laughs> of the year recommendation for a collector, even if someone doesn't like the movie per se, this is still a great-looking Megatron. He's got the fusion cannon. He's got the, the hip armor that hinges out of the way. It's just, other than those hollow forearms, other than... There not being a little panel to cover that, and that is so nitpicky, I know. But there is almost no kibble on the back. Even the wings wrap around and collapse around the legs instead of just sticking off like you would a com- like a Combiner Wars aerial bot, you know, just stuck off to the side. You've got hip skirts that lock into place. It's just this is probably one. Of, this is probably one of the best movie figures they've done. And I really can't recommend the Voyager enough. Uh, other than that, I am going to give an honorable mention to the both. Well, I guess I, I'm going to do. I'll be fair. The Titan to Turn Cup mold. I wound up loving this mold a whole lot more <laughs> than I thought I would. Yeah, the U.S. version is a little weird, but this I've got the Orion Pax version. I've also got the Takara version because it was so radically different than the U.S. version as well. I just think any any incarnation of this mold, I think you would really it would be, it'd be really appreciated by by a collector just because it's just each version is so unique. No, someone's marking there. They they they're, they're yelling at you. Yeah, I noticed <laughs> that. No. So, uh, I hate to give Cup like an honorable mention, but he's kind of a he's kind of like a niche thing because if you're not a big into the, like the post movie stuff 
or you're not a big Target Master fan, he may not hit all your buttons, but there's three versions. You can find one you like. Right. So that's it for me for official. All right. All right. Um, I'm going to break it into two categories. Um, I'm going to break it into the ones that I absolutely know. And um, I, I'm trying to remember if I got it this year. Uh, that's that's my problem. I, I, I buy so little. Um, I'm trying to think. When did uh, Primal come out? It was this year. I, I thought believe. it was this year. I believe it was this year. Was it early this year or was it the end of last year? I think it was end of last year. Yeah, it was end of last year. We got Cheetor this year. Okay. I don't want to say well, Cheetor. That's right. That's right. I bought. I got my primal. I bought it a little late, so I didn't actually get it until after first of the year. I'd still say primal. Sorry, even though it's last year. I that that masterpiece primal is just such a good figure, and, and we did get the. That's right, because we got the animated version this year. Yeah, we got the repaint this year. That's what it was. But um, it's such a it's such a fun toy. Um, and you're talking. If you guys will remember, a long time ago, when we were talking about uh, best toy ever. And I said, for the the value, the play value, you cannot beat the original Optimus Primal. Yep. It's just a fun, fun toy. Yep. And this one is just an updated version of it. It's just got tons of fun with it. You know, tons of fun. Not so, many of the Beast Wars toys hold up that long. The original toy holds up well, as well as Ultra Primal. Yeah, it's so good. And so I got to go with that. Now, the second thing I wanted to talk about, and I'm going to say this is a possible, and the only reason I say that is because while I've, I've held one, I've never owned it, and that is the Titans Return Triptychon. I, I like it. I think it's a good figure. It looks good. It's very, very reminiscent of the original. I mean, down to where if you put them next to each other and you went across the room, they look, they look the same. You know, they're really, really close. So... I, I like some of the features. Some of them didn't. I, I don't know. Uh, there were some things I didn't like about it. Um, I think the gimmick, the the swallowing gimmick, and all that. That just. I I would have rather have been more articulating and than that. But, you know, full tilt. Awesome. That little car looked. It looks amazing. So, and I think right now you might even be able to find one on sale. So, wouldn't be a bad idea for your, you know, transformer collector grab one of those suckers because I mean, I think uh, I think that's going to be high on uh, a lot of people's list. So that's for official. Um, what about unofficial? We'll go back to Sergio. I had mentioned it before. Uh, the Galaxy Meteor Cybertron Starscream for Make Toys. It's it's a great toy and. <clears throat> Not just because they're finally giving what I grew up with love, but it's just a solid figure overall. Uh, simple transformation, nothing, uh, nothing. It, it has a couple, couple feet uh, steps in it that'll, you know, make you go, "Wow, that's pretty smart." But nothing that'll, you know, make you want to throw it across the room. It's simple, back and forth, uh, great quality. The joints are great. The paint is great. There's really nothing that I see negative about it. The the one thing I love, see, I, Cybertron Starscream is not my favorite favorite design. So it's not, I, I really don't have any attachment to it. But again, I didn't grow up with, with it well, like a lot of people did. But I I do agree the engineering is great. Those leg panels on the back that flip up and fold in, that hide the hollowness in the back of the legs, that's brilliant. That I, I have to give them kudos for that. Because it's, it's, it's a gimmick. It makes it look better in robot mode. It's unobtrusive in vehicle mode. You don't have panels hanging off everywhere because it all compresses inside the lake. A phenomenally good idea to take care of that. Okay. Don, third-party pick. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go again with a couple things here. Uh, I mentioned Voyager Megatron. Why Zhang did the upscaled 
bigger than leader class Rensora of that Voyager Megatron. Uh, I, I picked up this one from a diecast on RFC, and it's it's as good as the regular Voyager. It's big. It's 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 big, but it's still visually impressive. The quality is there. The translucent blade is there. They fixed and added some coverings for the holes there on the forearms. Was not as noticeable. Plus, there's a very cheap upgrade kit for like seven bucks in most cases. That in plain mode, a lot of the, those exposed gaps can be filled. So he looks a little more solid in plain mode. <laughs> uh, so if you like the Voyager, but you want, but you if you want just like say one standalone piece just to look impressive, and you like the movie design, this this is a really good figure. You've got ratcheting joints. It's just. A really nice upscale of the the Voyager, uh, and I'm also going to recommend. Uh, oh, don't leave all in now. I'm going to recommend the. Uh, um, oh, this was the second Cosmos that came out. Which one? This was uh, Klaatu. Klaatu. Uh, yeah. To me, I love this Cosmos. I have the Toy World Cosmos. I have the clear version. Because, you know, me and the clear plastics, I, I kind of like them when, you know, the way they look. But this one right here, this, I believe this one, I think it was X Transbox Klaatu. This is a really great looking Cosmos. Uh, it's, he, he's got the look down pat. He, he's got the, the wrist blasters. The yellow is the right yellow. I just think this is, if you like Cosmos, and Cosmos is always one of, my, one of my favorite little unsung characters of the show. Because, uh, again, Mike McConaughey is one of my favorite voice actors. So there's that. Uh, the only thing else I'd recommend, is, or, well, I do have an official, one other official, but it's but it's kind of weird. Primitive Prime. I, I really hate recommending an official, uh, a, a a convention figure with the price right. he's going to be bringing. That's why I really didn't mention him during the official. But I do want to at least give him a shout out that if you're looking for a unique piece and. You don't mind spending a little more money if that's like if you're getting one nice thing. This is such a great reuse of that Optimus Prime mold in these colors. It's just and now you got to do is wait for the fire guts one to come. Right. So I mean, it's, <laughs> it, it's <laughs> just it's again it's a convention was a convention exclusive. It's going to cost you a little more now this far after the fact, but I would like to at least give it an honorable mention. As a possible, but it would be a really nice piece for a lot of people to have. Uh, the only other third party stuff I want to recommend is I am mentioning Y Zhang one more time because they have really gone beyond being just a, 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 a KOer. They've actually taken molds, made improvements, added die cast, added more parts to make a figure more complete. And I'm using this as an example. This is their, uh, and y'all saw this when I got it. This is the leader size version. Basically, it's the shatter. It's the, it's the, it's the Nemesis Optimus, the, the evasion mode, op, evasion mode Optimus that we got a couple years ago in leader class with extra parts. There's a little bit of die cast in here, but it just, it just looks that great. It's and you solid. said the quality was pretty good on that. The quality is is I really I have not transformed him since I got him. I'm just again I'm way behind on my getting stuff set up. But I did transform the regular colored Optimus version of this, and the and the extra mass and size makes that arm pivot on the top that evasion mode is kind of known for. Mm-hmm. It makes it a bit easier in with this larger scale. So it's like reverse reverse universe Galvatron. And and what's the price point on this? Uh, usually you can get him around seventy nine to ninety nine dollars, and he comes with a whole bunch. He comes with a shield, double swords, uh, axe. So he's got a wide range of of accessories as well. Um, so again, if you like the movie aesthetic, and well, heck, you could probably get this prime. And that Megatron, the Rensora, around one hundred and sixty to one hundred and seventy for the pair, which would make a really nice Optimus, Optimus and Megatron combo. But um, 
you know, that's that's what I recommend as far as third party. You got me right when I was texting. <laughs> um, okay, you want ham and pineapple. I do like that. I do like that combo. That you know, a Hawaiian pizza. There's nothing wrong with that. Oh, there's as nothing long, wrong. As long as you don't put black olives on it, I don't like the black olives. Well, I prefer Canadian bacon, but whenever you have Canadian that, bacon, you get ham. So it's like that's yeah, not the same. Yeah, not that's the same. right. I get you. Okay, so for um, non-official and. Don, you're going to know why, but okay. I'm going to pick the uh, the Zeta toys that have come out so far. The Bruticus pieces. Look at all the limbs. At the they look they look so much like the uh, the animated versions, and they're they're sixty bucks. Yeah, they're sixty bucks a piece, and everything I've heard from them, the quality is pretty damn good. I'm not going to say they're perfect. But they're pretty damn good. Now, um, I have yet to, of course, because we haven't gotten all of them yet, I'm, I'm kind of holding a little reserve on it, only to see what the combined mode, what people think of that. But I, and you know, you know Don is too, love Bruticus, my favorite. So you get one that, that looks a lot more like the show, and hell, it's even cheaper. Hell, I'm right there. Yeah, I'm there. Uh, I, I, can, I can understand, because... I'm getting I'm getting the small like little war in the pot the the, the pocket the, ones the, the pocket ones I'm getting that one there, but I can't wait to see what Zeta does for a different combiner that's in that kind of same scale. That would be, you know, interesting to see what they do next. Well, and that's the other thing, and and I'm going to preface that by saying yes, I'm telling you these are good picks and everything, but I'm also going to say look, I always wait uh, anymore. I wait, I wait, and I wait, I wait. I want to see what everyone has to say about it. And I also want to see, hey, for all I know down the road, something better's coming because it happens. Um, but I, I just, you know, I, I don't think you can go wrong with some of the picks that we've given, you know. Um, so uh, I hope that helps. Um, we did, like I said, we got this out a little early, like Don said. But, you know, with, with the, you know, you just came off the Black Friday sales, the Cyber Mondays, and, you know, who knows, they're going to have the – the next week slash price sales. Who knows? Um, Between so, now and Christmas, it's like it's Russian roulette. With it with is. Quality. You don't know. You don't know. And just remember, I mean, everyone's out there. They're all biting at the bit to uh, get your dollar. So they're all cutting deals. So um, so with that, is there anything else we wanted to do on this topic? I'm gonna add. I want to add one thing real quick. While you're out, buy a toy. Give a toy. Uh, you, you got yep. toys for tots. You got Salvation Army. You've got uh, individual companies and stores doing toy drives. Use some of these sales. Buy one, get ones, whatever the case may be. Dynamics your way into a good Christmas for somebody else. Oh, and I just now thought about this. I know, <laughs> Sergey. I know you got to pee, but hang on just a minute. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, uh, the other thing is, is and we were just talking about this before the show went on, is. Uh, Fun Publications has got 80% off right now. I mean, holy crap. If there was something that you wanted to do to, to get to, to fill in your, your, you know, your convention collection, 80% uh, off is pretty damn good. I mean, some of that stuff's going on for pennies. So, you know, might want to jump over there and see if there's some things. They got some neat items. I mean, I picked up, you know, they're, they're goofy. They're goofy. I picked up little shot glasses, but, I mean... The set was a dollar forty. I mean, you're not gonna you're not gonna lose anything on this. So, always good ideas, you know, little stocking stuffers, whatever. So, um, as always, as I've said before, do your homework, save your money, and shop smart. Shop S smart. Right. <laughs> right. So, all right, and with that, I think we're gonna wrap this one up. Um, uh, this might have been a little bit bit of a short one, but. Uh, we had one of us fall under the weather because they were eating those gas station hot dogs, which I warned them not to do. But, you know, whatever. You know, teach his own. Um, so with that, I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Um, so for uh, TFYLP, I'm Megamus. Don? I'm Headmaster Don. And Sergio. And we're going to call it a night.
Take care. We'll see you next week on TFYLP. Bye.